From Screen Junkie Studios in the heart of Los Angeles, this is Screen Junkies Movie Fights. Now your host, Andy Signor. Hello, everybody. Welcome to an amazing episode of Movie Fights. I'm so excited that I'm being attacked by the graphics already. You know we're in store for a good show. Uh, this is going to be a funny one. I say that I'm no pressure to my guests, but I just I can tell it's going to be because we have three really talented, funny people here. Uh, we have some amazing topics, such as if you had to cast a live-action Minions movie, which actor would you cast? Uh, if you had to pick a character from the movies to be the best Shark Tank judge, who would it be? Uh, as well as uh, uh, so much more. What is the best movie with the worst depiction of time? travel. Uh, I'm so happy to do this. Let's get right to it and introduce who our panelists are today. First up, I'm going all the way to the end. Our celebrity guest star, you know him from The Daily Show and Children's Hospital and Hot Tub Time Machine and so many amazing things. Mr. Rob Cordry. I'm sorry. This show is about arguing? Yes. Debating. I thought it was real fights because I learned like <laughs> I learned judo for this. Uh, well, you can break that out. I pulled a muscle in my groin <laughs> learning judo. Judo is that the proper as it, as it is called? Is that what the Iron Fist calls in, it in the East? <laughs> Rob, thank you for coming back. We had you on Screen Duckies way early on yeah, yeah, with yeah, our really other early. guest who I'm going to, Mr. Hal Rudnick. Yes, oh, you glad to be here. You guys had to do here. a fun video together. Oh, yeah. Do you remember uh, that Warm Bodies zombie training? Yep. Um, uh, what when a pro he was. Rob uh, got into character Daniel Day-Lewis yeah. style mm -hmm. to, uh, to play a zombie That's and right. involved actual eating of a human brain. <laughs> He did. Uh, but, uh, yeah, all the cast was very. Uh, although they told that. me later that it was a, um, it was a calf brain, uh, it was like, a, no. like a baby. But that's baby still cow. commitment. Yeah. Commitment. I eat it. Uh, <laughs> I'll eat a brain. <laughs> For sure. Happy to be here, Andy. Uh, came here to uh, kick ass, chew bubblegum, all out of bubblegum. All right. I love that. Next up, he's our current champ, and he needs to flex his comedy chops. Dan Murrow, <laughs> welcome to the show. Up. Back Thank to you. the show. It's been a while. It has been. It's been a while since I've done a regular movie. And you're in a weird seat. I'm, I'm not in my usual seat. Yeah. So oh, I'm not changing things bad. up today. You're going to lose. <laughs> so I'm not changing things up <laughs> Who did you beat? Who did you beat to get here? Everyone. <laughs> Kevin yeah. Smith. Yeah, he's the loser. <laughs> no, actually, I don't think I ever beat Kevin Smith. I thought you both did. Oh, he beat you. He beat Kevin Smith. I beat Kevin Smith. Yeah. He knows uh, nothing about movies. Well, yeah. I'm happy to announce, Dan, we do have any news for you, too. We are announcing that you are going to put the belt back on the line. Yes. Thursday, July 13th, 4 p.m. live on YouTube and Plus and all over. You're going to be able to watch it live, and you're putting the belt against no Mr. No delay. No delay. You can Whoa, watch, watch everyone. can tune in free. Yes. Watch live, 4 p.m. Thursday, July 13th, you versus Mike Carlson. So, yeah, you were saying Mike has fought a lot recently. He's Mike gotten is. some edge. You haven't fought. so And, here, and he's got he's got the funnies. Uh -huh. He's got the funnies, and I know these guys have the funnies, so I wanted to fight. So you're going to come in funny, funny today. I'm going to try to come in funny today. Don't, no pressure. Don't it seems like you're feeling here. like a little flabby. You're feeling a little <laughs> flabby. <laughs> I need to, I need to just yeah, shake yeah, the rust yeah, yeah. off a yeah. little bit. I'm excited. So this will be a good show. I know I got uh, uh, some good stars here. Let's go to our couch. So if they say anything wrong, Mr. Lon Harris will be fat-checking them. He has access to the internet, Rob, so he can tell you you're wrong at the end Whoa. of the round. The internet? Yes. Mm -hmm. The oh. actual internet. This is getting right more here complicated in my as, it, as it goes. <laughs> Can we just fight like judo? Sure. I got a hammer. <laughs> the Molnar? Um, but you're following along Twitter, hashtag Movie Fights Live. They're, I'm sure they're excited already. Yes. If Rob uses any illegal holds, I'm right there. I'll be all over it. Try it. Nice. Good. All right. So hashtag Movie Fights Live there on Twitter. He'll be following along the feed. Uh, you'll be able to vote there. And uh, let's get to this. Now, Rob, again, this is about debate. So even if you don't believe in your fight midway through, don't give up. Never surrender. No, 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 no. I want to. That's what this show's about. The passion. Uh, and no, the, and I'm the, right. Uh, I'm right. Good. <laughs> then you're in for this. Let's do it. Hear the music. What a lovely day! Are you not entertained? Let them fight. Boom! All right. Now, one of my favorite shows I watched, I've literally seen every single episode of this show, so I know it well. It's a show called Shark Tank, where they have all these uh, uh, experts in the, in the industry there to sort of hear pitches from anyone in the world to give the next big idea, the next million dollar thing. Uh, but this upcoming season, they're bringing a lot of, of new people. Some new energy will be into the tank. I think uh, Richard Branson's coming in, and a bunch of new people are coming in. But we wanted to ask, if you could put in one movie character, what movie character would make the best Shark Tank judge? Uh, we're going to start with you, Hal. Who do you pick? I thought long and hard about this, Andy, and uh, there are a few criteria that you need to be a Shark Tank judge. Well, there's just one criteria. You have to be rich. But um, also maybe a business person. Sure. And uh, I also wanted to pick someone who could add to that Shark Tank panel. So I'm going with the man, the myth, the legend, Willy Wonka. 
okay? Um, the most successful candy manufacturer in the known universe, um, an inventor. He changed the game when it comes to candy. And to be a candy uh, maker, to be successful in the dog-eat-dog world of candy, you got your Mars, your, uh, your Hershey's, etc. cetera, um, you have to be an innovator. Who innovates more than Willy Wonka? So he's and he's got his finger on the pulse. He knows what's going on. He has to. Uh, he's a tastemaker because he's literally giving people things to taste. And Willy Wonka would be the best Shark Tank judge. All right, Dan, who are you picking? I agree with Hal that you have to have some acumen, you have to have some business sense, but I think you also have to have the drive, and that's why I have picked Michael Corleone, Al Pacino's character from the Godfather films, and I'll tell you why. He has an entire family to support, and not that they don't have money, but Michael Corleone is about two things, and he's, he's either trying to legitimize his family, or he has millions of dirty money, millions of dollars in dirty money that he has to launder. And what better way to launder money than one toilet bowl light at a time? <laughs> he will find the most loosely structured organizations possible. He will organize them into ways to either funnel his dirty money through or bring in legitimate cash to the business. And this guy, I mean, shark. this is Shark Tank. You need somebody who's got the killer edge. And Michael Corleone has the killer edge. No one could, who else would go up against a guy like Mr. Wonderful than Michael Corleone? He's unflappable. He's going to give you a deal. He's going to face down those other sharks. He's going to make for great television. They have so many personalities on that show. Michael Corleone is going to be cool, calm, and collected. He's going to be the scary shark, and he's going to be the best shark. All right, Rob, who are you picking? Um, obviously, uh, I chose... Um, I decided to choose a superhero, Bruce Wayne. Mm. Yes, uh, Batman's alter ego. I think he fits easily fits all those qualities that Hal um, described, uh, and and has uh, one. I think he's easily the smartest um, smartest of the DC superheroes, and uh, and that's something that neither of you mentioned was was just pure raw. Intelligence, intelligence, and um, you know he studied for years with uh, Ra's al Ghul. I mean, <laughs> it's like that's the gauntlet, man. He he had to. Uh, I mean, Michael Corleone. You know, we'll, we'll get to that. But um, <laughs> but uh, he's um, he's also, I think, uh, the, the 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 better investor. And, and and that's something that neither, you guys didn't mention. Like this is all of this is a show about investing his own money. The shark judges yeah. do their own money. He's got money to burn, and he's and he um, has invested it wisely before. All right. Well, I want you guys to fight out, but I want to know what kind of what kind of item or business are they going to be looking for that we're going that I'm going to want to buy at home. Mm -hmm. Where are they going to step up and help me in that regard? And also just start attacking each other. Go well, it, it seems like every other pitch on Shark Tank is something about wine. Something about wine by the cup or wine club or something. So obviously with the Italian heritage and with the Corleone's olive oil connections, Michael Corleone is going to be able to, to give a little bit of insight there. Well, um, I'll say that Willy Wonka, he uh, invented the Wonka Vader. He invented the uh, everlasting gobstopper. Have you seen his river of chocolate? Uh, oh, yeah, everything in that factory is like an invention. So he knows gadgets. He can work with people on that level. If someone's going to uh, bring in some... some Something to improve your home, something to beautify your home, something to make things at home more convenient. Wonka would be like, well, as the inventor of the Wonka Vader, I know convenience. He understands not just candy, but gadgets and inventions, so he can mm. fully handle that. Who understands gadgets more than Bruce Wayne, <laughs> aka the Batman? He, um, he, uh, 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 I just totally lost my train of thought, but shut up. Because here it comes. I'm, yeah. um, <laughs> anyway, uh, gadgets. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, that was uh, that was. Um, I sent myself off on a. On a I'm gonna, <laughs> but did, go did, ahead. Did Bruce Wayne invent them, or did Lucius okay, that Fox? Was, that's, or? What, that's what I wanted to get to. Mm -hmm. No, that's right. No, he knows how to delegate. You know, um, and he's not going to be running these businesses that he invests in. He also has to invest his trust in these people. Uh, bringing these various gadgets to him. And I would say that usually those gadgets, the ones, the shows that I've seen, have been uh, fitness-based. 
Mm-hmm. A lot of the most successful ones, the uh, the surfing one and the uh, yeah. the surf ball, I think is the most successful one. Uh, Shark Tank, so fitness space. Bruce would get in the fitness space. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Bruce well, could definitely beat all three That's of those. Yeah, just want right. fitness. Would it be a problem, though, that Bruce is a depressed loner? No, 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 no. That's not very TV no, friendly. No, no, no. Listen, no, no, no. <laughs> Batman is a depressed lo- uh, loner. Bruce Wayne has an alter ego, which he has to prove. He has to show the world this crazy <laughs> wild side. He's like so he's Mark crazy... Cuban times a hundred uh, on that show, and he's also, good TV. But, uh, Michael thing, Corleone, yes. he he's a criminal. No, he's a he killer. Would, he wouldn't want that spotlight. No, no, no. no. He's yeah. a murderer. Oh no, legitimacy. This is all about legitimacy. And what better way to go legitimate than to be on ABC television at eight o'clock on Friday? <laughs> <laughs> what gives your family more legitimacy I, than that? I, I gotta say. About Willy I gotta say, here. wait! I gotta say about, about yes. Michael Corleone for a second here. I, I, and how, really, how good is he at his job? Like Fredo, uh, yeah. uh, his mentally disabled brother, <laughs> one could argue, yeah. like was able to screw him over. You know, like like he's, Fredo he's, didn't get away with it. Eventually, yeah. You know, I mean, it took Cuba falling for him to uh, that's a, that's a, uncover that's, that. That's a great damn point. Um, also, uh, Willy Wonka is excellent at vetting and picking the right people. Look at all those kids that he had to dispatch. He well, picked Charlie. This is what I want to say about Willy Wonka, though. Yes. Because we're, we're talking about business here. And all I've seen from Willy Wonka is divestiture. He's not interested in running a business. That's his <laughs> whole thing. He was giving his entire business away. And as an entrepreneur walking into the Shark Tank, I myself would want assurances from the Shark that I'm pitching to that they would not give this company that I have poured my lifeblood into to a child three months down the line who um, has yeah. no business experience Dan, whatsoever. Dan, oh, he's a child. No, no, has Dan, a very long history of Dan, doing. Dan, he has everything. He's the man who has he had everything. everything. He gave it all away. Yeah, because... He has nothing. Yeah, really he got to because he got this sweet job on Shark Tank <laughs> making... making a, Making SAG scale. Listen, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, wait, listen. Once you cl- once you climb Everest, there's nothing left to climb. But he's he gave he's Bruce all Wayne away. actually That's climbed Everest. <laughs> he's actually climbed Everest. But here's the thing about Bruce Wayne that I worry about because go, go again, ahead. this is about who's going to be the best Shark Tank judge, and and television is all about dependability. And how many Batman movies have we seen where it's a banquet or Bruce Wayne's supposed to make a speech or something, and it pans over and there's an empty chair with like the Mr. Wayne placard, and it's no one is there. And I feel like if the Joker's up to some shenanigans, well, guess what? Shark Tank is shooting, and you have an empty chair. You, have, Shark you Tank have four shoots chairs like... and an empty Bruce Bruce Wayne is not going to be there Shark Tank the shoots sharks. like six episodes in a day. Here, here's <laughs> gonna make it. Don't and if the Riddler attacks Gotham Bo- City then guess what? You're both out. of your guys are not good businessmen and here's why. They both inherited their fortunes. Willy Wonka built his company from the ground up so he's the best businessman. Also, he's gonna add unpredictability and fun. Remember that moment where the, the, the cane stuck in the ground and you thought he was gonna fall down and he does a little flip? Get ready for those kind of shenanigans on Shark Tank. Well, you know what other kinds of shenanigans you should get ready for if you're an investor with Willy Wonka? He's going to push you into a chocolate river yeah, and see tricks. if you drown. I'm tricks. sorry. I don't want he that kind of murder. a whole group of children. <laughs> entire, like, he had no assurance. First of all, I don't think he'd be able to get on the show. I think they'd be like, this guy's a liability. Uh, you know, he's he murdered, almost murdered. I, I don't know what happened to Violet Beauregard after uh, after the camera started rolling, you know? I mean, she, she, was, a, she was turned into a Fruit, a yeah, fruit. a giant blueberry. Yeah, man, yeah, she's fine. She came down and died. I don't know. It seems he seems to me to not be a good investor. He's not div- like uh, diversified at all. He's just candy, and um, and he's reckless. Let me ask you. He's reckless. Did anybody want those golden tickets? Um, everybody wanted the golden tickets. Oh, you take a page from McDonald's playbook. Yeah. That's how he just did Monopoly. <laughs> McDonald's has been doing it for years. That's how he was like. Oh, that looks like a good but idea. But here's the thing. I, I, I get my cup, I tear off the Monopoly thing, I'm like, garbage. Golden ticket, he, he did it right. He won up to McDonald's. But I feel like Bruce Wayne also is only interested in products that relate directly somehow to him being Batman. Uh, see, that's so I feel like unless wrong. you're making a gas pellet or Actually, a spike, right. he's, not gonna, he's, not gonna, he's not gonna invest in you. I he's agree with a you. very narrow focus. He's like I, when they bring the guy, who, uh, Chris, yeah. from, uh, he's only interested in apps, and that's it. He's very not interested to watch as a shark, because if somebody's pitching, you know, uh, the fitness board, you know that the Chris guy is not Chris gonna invest. Saka, Chris yeah. Saka, because yeah. he's only interested in, like, if it has an app. I feel well, like Bruce Wayne was only interested if it's going on QVC. I would argue that everything relates to Batman. You know, like a, a, anything. I, like a, 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't watch this stupid show. <laughs> Shark Tank. I don't know how the but, Scrub Daddy you would know, relate like, to Dark I'm just Knight. trying to think of the as seen on TV aisle yes. in my drugstore, and like all that stuff relates to. He's resourceful. Like what? Are, Squatty what, Potty. What, who could sell that the best? <laughs> but um, well, I just want to one thing. What's Michael Corleone's um, business? What are they going to say Michael he Corleone. did? Michael Corleone like, if they ask took, a, took a, a meager family. I mean, you know, Don Corleone. Rest his soul. Uh, did uh, did a great job running a small family business. What Michael Corleone did over uh, less than a decade was to take his 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 family's illegitimate olive oil mafia business and turn it into a multi million dollar uh, casino. And I mean, he diversified through so many different stocks and bonds. Like he turned it into an empire. <laughs> a murder. No. Yes. Godfather like, Two. It was a legitimate, a legitimate empire. No, and they, pulled they, they, they pulled him uh, back in. They pulled him back in. They pulled him back in. They pulled him back in. For your somewhere. final closing. Yes. I am now. Now the creator of the Squatty Potty. If you mm-hmm. don't know the Squatty Potty, it's a stool that goes in front of the, the toilet, stool so you stool. can properly uh, put a your, release. It release. gives you a more a yes, natural you're a Stern position fan. You know for, about the Squatty Potty. Release, yes. <laughs> but the yeah. Squatty Potty was a successful uh, purchase on uh, Shark Tank. So now I am walking into the tank. You are each your judges. Tell me why I should sign with you. How, as Willy Wonka, what, what would you what would you do? The squatty potty is a step in the right direction. Step up on the squatty potty. It's good for your body. And then I, it's, um, and <laughs> um, your poop's going to go ploop right into the toilet. And, uh, and ooh, I'm going to reach in and grab it. No, that's just chocolate. That's a Wonka bar. You eat enough Wonka bars, you're going to need the squatty potty. See, he would sell it. There's a food and squatty potty connection, okay? okay. That's very natural. Oh, and okay. he's going to have the most fun. Squatty potty already rhymes. Willy Wonka loves rhymes. <laughs> Candy's very binding. Okay, Dan, your your turn. You're <laughs> closing here. I would say, as, as Michael as Corleone, I would look at an investor just straight in the eye, and I would say, "Listen, I'm going to take off the business uh, hat right here. I'm going to speak to you as Michael Corleone." <laughs> I know how important it is for a bathroom to have all of the necessary implements that you need. I I know how important it is for a bathroom to be well stocked and for it to be prepared for when you go inside that bathroom. To make sure that you come out with more than your dick in your hands, as my brother said. That's why I'm in the bathroom space already, and that's why you're I'm just, gonna know just, how to sell the squatty you're, potty. You're destroying your whole argument. Like <laughs> trying to picture Michael Corleone say anything like that is just it's right, head exploding. Well, it's time to hear Bruce Wayne do it because yeah. I, because of Michael Corleone. Like first of all, I want also make the point like it's not good TV. He's just like. Yes, I would like to invest. You know, he's he's just uh, he's a anyway. So how would get, uh, Bruce Wayne selling? Oh, how would he? How would we invest in this? Bruce Wayne would say, "You're telling me that this thing will shave about ten minutes off my daily poop." <laughs> And he's doing the calculations in his head of what he can do with that ten minutes. You know, sold, sold a hundred thousand dollars. Oh, wow, no one else offered me money. All right, good good mention there. Blonde, as I take all those arguments, uh, anything wow. to add there from the, uh, a from the Twitter things. sphere? We don't really have a lot of evidence that Willy Wonka is the world's most successful candy maker, as Hal implied. Definitely he has the most delicious candy. Mm. We Slugger. don't know if he's actually the best-selling candy maker. Uh, many people online pointed out that uh, took issue with the idea that Michael Corleone appearing on TV would bring more legitimacy. They're saying unless he'd already made the businesses legitimate, it just brings more scrutiny to his criminal enterprises. Uh Also, we don't have any good indication that Bruce Wayne has climbed Everest specifically. He climbed an unnamed Asian mountain in Batman Begins. That was actually filmed in Iceland, however, not in uh, Asia. You son of a bitch. Uh, (laughs) Other suggestions that uh, Twitter liked a lot, Lex Luthor, Immortan Joe from Mad Max, Gordon Gekka. Gordon 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 Gekka was a very good oh, Twitter yeah. suggestion, and uh, Tony Stark came up a lot. Also, Jack Shidley suggests Donald Trump from Home Alone 2. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. In a different oh, universe, a for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wow. That guy would never be on a reality show. <laughs> well, I'll be honest. Uh, it came down to Dan and Rob, how I think they did get you on sort of his, the fact that he is really uh, kind of dangerous. Um, and, More dangerous uh, than Michael Corleone? Yeah, you know, <laughs> or Batman? Uh, yeah, surprisingly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow they did. 
<laughs> you couldn't uh, pin those attempted murders uh, on Michael Corleone. There was also some disagreement about in the Burton version we do. It's implied that the children survive Willy no. Wonka's factory. We don't get oh, that no much one counts the Burton version. The Burton. Right. With the we 70s version, version. No. Right. no, no, this is Gene. This is Gene Wilder yeah, all the way. I, I didn't. I thought that was implied. Sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> based on the arguments, came down to Michael and uh, Bruce Wayne for me. Um, Dan, you did. Uh, even though he is a killer, you sold me on, on, on those things pretty well. Um, I love that he's win. laundering the money and all, all those. Th- he has the killer edge. You go against Mr. Wonderful. Um, uh, yeah, but then Bruce Wayne, you know, I, I was told, tor- I was torn, but then you did remind me he is that sort of the playboy billionaire attitude. He is going to be interesting on TV where Corleone's probably going to be very dry and boring. It ultimately came down to the pitch, and uh, Rob sold me. As the owner of Squatty Potty, I would invest with Bruce Wayne, so I got to give Rob the first points. Yes. Cordry. Cordry's up on the board. For the win. All right, round two. Uh, in honor of our guest, uh, who starred in a, t- a wonderful uh, time travel show, uh, movie, we wanted to ask, uh, we didn't want to go best time travel movie here, because mm. we all agreed it's Back to the Future. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe Terminator. And we could also probably argue that there really has never been a terrible time travel movie. Yeah, sure. You know yeah, what I mean? Never, ever. Um, uh, but we thought, why not try this one? What is the best time travel movie with the least realistic depiction of time travel? Mm-hmm. Give me the best movie with the silliest, most ridiculous time travel elements that we still love anyway. Um, and Dan, you're starting us off. Uh, I chose a favorite of mine, still a favorite of mine, almost 30 years old right now, uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. I think it is uh, uh, still hilarious. It is is somehow not really, even though it was made in the late 80s, a lot of the movies from that decade have not aged as well. I think this has aged well. I think it's still funny. I love the idea of, like, I legitimately as a kid learned some historic things about from this movie about like who was <laughs> suck- I'm just saying but a five year old no. this was my first uh, uh, exposure to, to Socrates and Billy the Kid different eras it still has some jokes I think that work uh, the whole thing about that we learned so many things like Joan of Arc and Socratic Method like that this movie's a lot more clever and funny than people give it credit for I think it still holds up however it's depiction of time travel even in the loosely defined realities and rules of time travel movies is completely ridiculous. There are circuits of time that you use in a phone book. You look up dates in a phone book, but you don't type in the date. You have to type in, like, there's a prefix code that goes, like, if, if you want to go to tomorrow, you have to dial two, but you have to dial one. And there's a, it, it even among time travel movies, and this is, the, this is a genre that's had people, you know, hit by lightning and you go back in time. It makes no sense whatsoever. It's there's a it's a what? No, it's, we we'll go further into it. But as far in, in, in differential between best movie and least realistic depiction of time travel, I think that Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure takes it easily. Oh, uh, Rob, what are you picking? I picked um, the butterfly effect. Uh, one through how many ever <laughs> butterfly effects they've blessed us with, um, uh, because what is it? He it's. He, he travels through time by reading, I think, is basically the concept. I, right? I'm not, I'm not even sure about that. Like, it's not, they, they, that, now listen, I've been in a room, I've been in a room before, a writer's room, you know, for three hours trying to write a time travel movie, um, <laughs> trying to figure out what the device is going to be, and we realized that Everybody that's written a time travel movie has been here before and has done this. And if you were to actually come up with the perfect one, you'd you'd invent time travel. (laughs) So do you like the movie? Uh, Look, it's got AK in it. You know, which, uh, I can't help but like it for that reason. And I'm just a sucker for time travel movies in general. I was I, that always or because of Hot Tub? No, 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 always from from way back when. Uh, you know, I I even cried at the end of the Lake House, which is a, a terrible, terrible movie. Um, so I'm a, I'm a sucker for it, but um, I. I, I it, it didn't leave a mark. Like I, I can I can't tell you what the plot of it was, and I'd be dead if I was gonna watch it for this. Like <laughs> not sitting through butterfly effect. I, I get it. You know, you get the general idea. He reads and goes back in time. He goes back in time. <laughs> yeah. All right, El Hal, what movie are you picking? Well, um, I, the question was best unrealistic. So I had to go uh, with a movie that is one of the best, one of my, one of the best comedies of the past ten years, um, with a character who really inspired me, Lou Dorchin. Mm-hmm. Um, it just, uh, like, 
so full of a flawed a flawed man in that film, but so full of pathos. Oh, you got it. And uh, but the movie is Hot Tub Time Machine because oh, I, I don't know how that damn hot tub time machine worked. They spilled um, the, this uh, drink called Chernobyl yeah. into the tub, and then right. it worked by magic. That uh, that's unrealistic. Okay, I don't get it. Um, we'll but, see in the ring. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, but it's one of the. Uh, it's a, it's a great comedy. Uh, you go along for the ride. It's I think uh, one of the beautiful things about that movie is that it is this the most inane collision of things. The hot tub and it's a time machine and uh, there. You're, there's no way to not like that movie, and it's so funny. But there's no, from what I remember, there's no explanation as to how the time travel works. All right, fight it out. If only we had an expert who yeah. could help explain. Oh, oh, I, I may know a little bit about that, how that works. Now, see, now you could make an argument. One um, would, could make a, an intellectual argument about um, the nitro triminium that is in the Chernobyl. Um, being the <laughs> device that when spilled onto the hot tub, it uh, it it, it uh, triggers a reaction that causes a time machine. What to is form. nitro triminium? Again? Nitro triminium, man, it's techno babble. <laughs> techno babble is unassailable. Yeah. It's it's a de- it's a device used in it's like lamp shading. It's everything, <laughs> man. You can't write movies without techno babble. Um, but however. Uh, I will defend Hot Tub as being like, I think if you watch it, Chevy Chase explains, Chevy Chase's character, the Time Lord or whatever his name is, (laughs) explains that it's really not about the Nitro Triminium or the Hot Tub. It's about these friends getting uh, together after years and years and years in the same hotel room with the same hot tub, and they all have problems with their lives, and they go have to go back in time to fix these problems. And like any really good movie, Groundhog Day, uh, it's uh, they they have to learn a lesson. They have to evolve as humans before they can go back to the present with their lives having been changed for the better. Now, when you say it's magic. Yeah, I will totally agree with you. It's magic, and that's not a bad time travel device. I would say it's even the best. Groundhog Day. Um, Groundhog Day is probably one of the best movies ever written, let alone time travel, if you want to call it that. But um, that's just pure magic as well. See, I would agree. I think that I, I think the X factor is what Hot Tub Time Machine has going for it as far as time travel. Because I agree, like there is an X factor there, the unknowable, these this the the, the, the techno babble. There could be something there that causes time travel. We don't know. We don't know what this thing is. It's invented. Bill and Ted is positing that travel through time is possible via a capsule that travels literally through a series of interconnected tubes. It's how they used to describe the internet. It's a series of tubes. Through a series of tubes, through a phone book that, like, what's this phone number for, like, October 17th, 1912? I will say. Every number, every date has a number, but inside that date, there's a different number corresponding to the time of day. You can go back in time, but when you come back, you can't go back to where you came from. You can only come back to the same time, or you're going to be in the past. I think you're you're shooting out. yourself in the foot with yeah. your own no, argument it's the because least it, no, it, the least no, realistic. the most realistic no, because I agree. they came I back. Agree. No, yes, I yes, no, no, no. no. I'm going to tell you why. Yeah. It was it. Um, tell they, them they, how. they traveled back from the year 26 something, and then they in uh, a phone and, booth. Yes, in a how? phone booth. Yes, because it was a repurposed phone booth, so it could blend into society. That's Dan, right. if you had some big ob- like uh, monolith or something from 2000. One like that—that that would be ridiculous, yeah, and the take authorities it back to a would time come. Where it does and stick out. It you just sense. They all of the details, all of the details you said, all of the details you said, just laid out the most detailed, plausible yes. no, time travel it's, it's of it's any of us. No, no, you laid you out have, a very you have, detailed, you, plausible you have, time travel. You, have, you, have you, some, you had you punch it, it into the computer. It would have been sillier. It would have been sillier if it was actual dates you punched in. It's it's just a it's a time machine in disguise. But you're looking. So it's like book. you're, you're putting in numbers your, from a phone book on a telephone. Well, yeah, yes. they're not gonna, we have a chemical reaction in. here. 
That's realistic. Some kind of a chemical reaction with an unknown chemical that somehow causes over something. There? Over here, we had Clifford V. Johnson. This guy's a physicist from USC. I went back and looked at our videos. We were talking about X-Men Days of Future Past, and he was talking about time travel. That's a good and one. he and Hal was asking him about Days of Future Past. And he said, isn't it interesting if you view the fact that Wolverine was only traveling through time in his head? Because if you take the possibility of traveling through time, but it's only in your head, then all all instances of scientific impossibility fall away, and it actually becomes somewhat plausible because it's something that's only knowable to one person. Well, so I would, I would then say that you have a chemical reaction here, you have a possible physical brain reaction here, and here you have invisible circuits and a phone booth and a phone book that you call a number and can somehow end I, up with I Napoleon think, and Billy the I gotta kid. say, I gotta say, like, any, any time travel device that was made in the future... Mm -hmm. Uh, is unassailable. Yeah, because I it disagree. was made in the future. Absolutely. We don't understand their technology. Well, uh, I Rob, the other uh, half to your uh, question too. Yeah, which is, uh, it's best time travel movie with least realistic depiction of time travel. And, and yeah, I apologize, it's hot tub Rob. Time Machine. Butterfly Effect is not a good movie. No, it's really. I don't bad. know. I have no it's, idea. It's, 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 I'm not arguing that point. It's really poor. <laughs> That's and, not my argument. And Hot Tub Time Machine is a. Fu I love that movie. It's new and unassailable. And I feel like I feel like it had, the, the book has yet to be written on Hot Tub. Time Machine's legacy. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, 30 <laughs> years later, we did our honest trailer poll. We took viewer requests. It was one of the top five most requested movies. Like, people still love this it's a great movie, movie 30 years later. It is a great movie. Yeah. So I feel like, looking at this question, best movie, least realistic, I think this one hits both of those the best. All right, I'm using that as your final thoughts. Rob, final thoughts. Uh, I don't think uh, uh, the, the quality of the movie uh, enters into the argument at all. It's a, it's literally boiled down to the device in which by which they travel, and um, and to uh, like I said, a, f a movie from that is uh, with a time travel device is coming from the future is unassailable. Um, what about a hot tub? A hot tub time machine, I I argued, is a really good uh, really good depiction of uh, of. Realistic movie time travel because because it's, of the nitro it, it's, it's it's magic, man. but right. but it's also just you, you, I mean, Chevy Chase says like yeah you didn't need it in the first place basically or something like that I don't know I haven't seen the movie uh, <laughs> <laughs> I heard it's good um, but the butterfly effect haven't heard you guys like argue against that too much <laughs> he's just reading it is terrible he's reading so. Hal, final thoughts? Uh, well, uh, Rob, you said uh, we shouldn't uh, talk about the quality of the movie. It's in the question, uh, <laughs> what best time travel movie. So um, I feel like that disqualifies the butterfly effect. Also, um, we, uh, I think Dan made a great point about Wolverine traveling in his mind. Um, there, were such a, there was such a specific, detailed mode of time travel. They actually probably spent too much time with the specifics and uh, as to what Bill and Ted, how they traveled, and and in that phone booth, it was to blend into society. It wasn't a regular phone booth. It was a phone booth designed by the wild stallion culture of the future. <laughs> Hot Tub Time Machine, hilarious movie. Great performances by Robinson, Cordry, Duke. But um, non non no, nonsense. Not Cusack. Oh, oh, oh gotta, love the, <laughs> gotta, gotta love the cues. Ooh. Gotta love the cues. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I'm too taken by uh, Lou Dorchin. Um, but uh, yeah, they spilled a drink into the tub <laughs> and they went back in time. Um, ridiculous. All right, Lon, over there on the internet. Uh, so uh, the explanation of butterfly effect time travel is actually very uh, realistic and specific to the film. He can go back and inhabit his former self, placing his adult mind in his younger body when he reads the journals that he wrote as a teenager. So yes, <laughs> wow, he, it is time travel reading. Uh, that is correct. You got the exact term correct. Nitro triminium tri is the mm -hmm. uh, is the ingredient that makes the hot tub. <laughs> and he would know. He would know. I would and know. Bill and <laughs> Ted. <laughs> Bill and Ted travel forward to futuristic city, and the year is 2688. And it is made clear in the film that it is not a phone booth. It has been disguised as a phone booth to fit in to 1988 San Diego. Sorry, Boom. it looks like a phone booth. But, it, but futuristic city people made it look like a phone booth so that and it would. Never changes to blend in ever again. Well, that's not their fault. I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just supplying the facts. 
Uh, all right, I'll, that's it? Oh, I, got, I mean, I got... Yeah, yeah. Uh, Go Twitter also liked Land of the Lost came up a bunch. Back to the Future came up a lot. Days of Future Past, Time Cop, Donnie Darko, and Superman. All common answers. Oh, Superman. Does and I have, back, a yeah. Superman, I have a poll. Superman, yeah. He does. He oh, flies, like flying, he flies to... <laughs> he spins the world in reverse to send <laughs> everything back in time. This one's tough for me because... Uh, yeah, they got you, Rob, just because the movie sucks, and you even admitted it. And the question bitch. is best time traveling. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you did have some good arguments back at the other two. But I think I didn't read gonna... the question because yeah, I didn't want to go back in time. It happens. Um, <laughs> Thank, then, thanks, everybody. Uh, uh, thanks, uh, pal. You you know you did get some good points back on Dan's that you know it is a repurposed time machine just to look for the times. Um, uh, but then Dan did have some really good stuff back on the fact that the physical brain and then the chemical reaction are sort of realistic reasons, whereas what the hell's happening in Bill and Ted? Uh, oh, this one's tough. But they did combat you with some recent facts. So it comes down to what's the better movie then, in my mind. And I think Dan sold me, no offense to, miss, to the star of the other film. Wow. <laughs> Dan wow. did sell me a little as to why Bill and Ted might be holding up, or just because it's been out longer, which is sort of a disadvantage to Hot Tub. Both very funny films, but I got to give the slight edge to Bill and Ted since it, it's you, you, you f- mm. fought me a little bit harder as to why that was the better film. So how, uh, Dan gets the point. There are no boobies in Bill and Ted. Yeah. I just want to thank you. You had said that during the time. Damn it. Uh, it would have been just, a delightful I, fact check. I would have enjoyed fact checking for that. putting me in that position, by the way, for having to combat <laughs> your movie against you in order to win yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that happened fun. against Seth Rogen, too, where he had to, yeah. Spencer yeah. had to go against the Green Hornet. Uh, I didn't back down like uh, Seth uh, his face. Uh, <laughs> on, on Twitter, Andy, uh, you want to hear the poll results? Yes. The fans agreed. Uh, 46% went for Bill and Ted. 34% Hot Tub Time Machine. 20% Butterfly. Ah, damn yeah. it. Hot Tub Time Machine. They're very funny. I, did, I yeah. genuinely uh, do love it. But I grew up with Bill and Ted. <laughs> Moving to round three. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, this is a fun one. If there was ever a live action Minion reboot, what three performers should play the Minions? That's right. We're going to take Despicable Me or the Minions. We're putting real actors in there, whether they're mo capped or whatever. We need to see these actors in these roles. What three performers would play the best minions? Rob, we're coming to you first this time. Um, obviously, I think it would have to be Benicio del Toro playing all of the minions. Okay. Um, <laughs> wow. He's a very versatile actor. He's also uh, mumbles with the best of them. <laughs> um, can't understand a goddamn word that guy says some of the time, and uh, which is perfect for the minions. Uh, he's also very funny, and um, I don't know. I, I feel like it's 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 hard it's hard to argue against him. It's Benicio. He can do anything. Okay. Yeah. All right. We'll come back and hear more. But uh, Hal, who are you picking as your performers for the Minions? Jack Black, Shaq, and Betty White. There, they there are. you have it. Oh, look at that. If you had rhymed the third one with <laughs> yeah. the other two, that would have been. I, th- I thought about it long and hard. <laughs> <laughs> I and, believe that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what? I'm just going with Betty White. Um, so Jack Black would, uh, would bring a lot of comedy. He would bring Pratt Falls. He would bring a physicality to this live-action Minions. Then Shaq, he would bring, it would just be a visual tour de force, giant shack as a minion. And then <laughs> Betty White, we've never answered the question. We've never addressed the question. If we have, it escaped my purview. Where do minions, how, how are they, how do they procreate? Betty White is going to be a, a like the queen alien from Aliens. Betty White is going to be the queen minion who gives birth to minions. <laughs> and there's going to be you in will never my sell this script. <laughs> in, in my in my minions live action movie a very graphic love scene between <laughs> Shaq and Betty White. Oh wow. All right. Jeez Louise. Uh, Dan. I was gonna say I put way too much thought into this, but I think Hal actually put way too much thought into this. Um, I picked uh, Tony Hale as Kevin. He's the tall minion with glasses. Uh, I picked Will Sasso uh, as Stuart. He's the one that has one eye. And then I picked as Bob, who's the short one with glasses. I just picked Robert De Niro because let's be honest, this is where we've been heading for the last 10 years anyway. And uh, I think that uh, Tony Hale, we know he can do comedy, Arrested Development. Obviously, look at that. Look at Just look at that. He's, he's playing him yellow. He's already a minion. Uh, Will Sasso, he already took one cultural plague, which was Vine, and did amazing things with it. So maybe he could do a great thing with minions. And then I think that, and again, De Niro, I mean, what is left for it's it's 
it's like he's challenging himself to do things that are more and more make people go like what and i feel like that's the ultimate thing and i've got to be honest i'm kind of curious what de niro would do as a minion what would he sound like i i, I, that, I that's what i want to know i want to know what he tried what to do the voice he would he go method would he just be like i'm a minion you know like what would he do i want to know or would he phone it in like half of his other movies Even nowadays that, imagine him as a minion phoning it in i just the only way that he would be interesting to me at this point is if he just went all the way with it so all right guys fight it out i think what you did actually was that you you for the character bob mm-hmm. you just kind of lost steam <laughs> and were like bob <laughs> Bobby De Niro, I don't know. Much like yeah, Robert De Niro himself. You, you um, can just say Bob and you're talking about him or his character and he'll answer to I, I feel like we have to like break these down individually. Um, with mine, you don't have to because it's only one guy, which seems like the right way to go. First of all, first of all, the artist, so you got your three main minions, yeah. right? Uh, um, You've also got thousands of minions behind them. If you cast three different actors to play those minions, you, you've got a you've got a, a big job ahead of you of all these these uh, fa- fa- faces and uh, let me ask you a question, Rob. Though okay. um, go ahead. Go ahead. has uh, go the ahead. minions are often delightful. I've never seen Benicio del Toro play any other speed than menacing. How is that going to fit into minion territory? Thought he was delightful, unusual suspects. Very menacing. <laughs> Oh, come on. He was the good time guy. He was, he was, he was just out for a good time. Um, I think you're thinking of uh, Stephen Baldwin. <laughs> um, I, I, so, I, so, yeah, my thought was only usual suspects based. <laughs> so what, what, what else you got here? Jack Black. No, th- sure. Jack Black. I would say Jack Black would be a great choice for all the reasons you, you cited as, as all of the minions. That would be perfect. I'd watch that. Shaq... Great comic Whoa. timing. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. No, great basketball timing, <laughs> questionably. Um, did, and, did you ever see him on the t- uh, the TNT uh, basketball telecast? The guy is hilarious. And, Very deadpan. But let's get to, let's just get to Betty White. Oh yeah. Let's get to Betty White. Unassailable. Because <laughs> no, sir, sir. This is now. This is like stunt casting at its worst. What? But <laughs> Betty White is the. Is the was the was the old lady that wouldn't go away seven years ago, <laughs> and I think finally, finally after like just incessant Betty White fatigue, being banged on the back of your head with Betty White every time you turn on the television or the, go to the movies, we finally like stepped away. We finally said that's enough. It's it's one joke. It's a one joke thing that's been done over and over again. Like the minions. It's really funny. <laughs> we get out. Get out. We got out five years ago while the getting was good. No more Betty White. We need one more. We need, we one, need one last more? ride. One last no. ride from <laughs> Betty White. Why do we need one because last Because she's ride? at death's door. <laughs> <laughs> but this wow. was this this is not what if God oh, forbid dear, how, just think somebody's about, grandmother. No, just think about this, by the way. If how wants to bring that into it, just think about this. Mm. What if God forbid Betty White did this movie and then and then moved on? And this was the last thing Betty White ever did. How depressing moved on, you mean would that down. yes, if yeah, she passed okay. on. How depressing would that be if this was Betty White's last thing? Dedicated in the memory of of Betty White and Jack Black. She'd probably get killed by Shaq in that love scene you described. (laughs) Is there going to be actual penetration in that love scene, by the way? She would use a body double for that scene, and there will be actual penetration. It's grotesque, Al. There's only one word for it. It's It's beautiful. (laughs) As of now, her last uh, thing would be her reality show where her and uh, a bunch of other senior citizens pranked people. And that sounds lovely. And the perfect way to remember Betty White. A fun old lady having fun and pranking younger people. That's Can we just let the woman rest for God's (laughs) sake? Can we just let her retire in peace? She's she's already she's already on board. She doesn't want it anymore. All right. What about Tony Hale, Will Sasso, and De Niro? Do you guys have thoughts on that one? Oh, gee, I don't even know. This is like a this is like a a stew made with whatever you have in your cupboards during a hurricane. <laughs> it's like, what? Tony Hale, they're all, of, of course, like separately, these guys are all great, you know? Tony mm-hmm. Hale would be an excellent minion playing all of the minions. So would Will Sasso. However, I, I think that was kind of an easy choice because um, 
I think that was kind of an easy choice because just like your De Niro, because Will Sasso was in um, the Three Stooges, the Three Stooges, yeah. and he crushed it. So I think that's where your brain was. That's where you made that connection, that kind of easy connection, and just gave. I think you gave up on this question. No, man. I didn't. <laughs> I, I did not give up on the. You went Tony I Hale. Didn't. You were like brilliant, and then kind of like fizzled out. No, you fizzled out. <laughs> I'm trying to give the minions a shot. I'm trying to give the minions a shot, and I'm sorry. No child is going to go see an army of mumbly, greasy Benicio del Toro's marching. <laughs> across the screen. I'm sorry. No child is going to go see this. If we're going to do this Minions movie, and God help us, they probably are, I'm trying to give you something interesting. I'm trying to give you something funny, and I'm trying to give you some You're people that are actually going to do really it. Good it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of pedestrian. Uh, may I know? Pedestrian? My, yeah, mine is the only cast with a little bit of diversity uh, to, to play these Minions. Oh. And the Minions... I don't know put what that card back in your oh, And right. put that deck back in your pocket, my friend. This is not the place to play that card. Yeah. Oh, I mean, Shadow uh, Jack, underrated actor. Okay, you're Did just you? lying now. Yeah, this now is that's just a lie. that is what that's pure just, ball he's garbage. He's got great Lunacy. timing. That's, he does not have. <laughs> he's, he's naturally funny. Nate, I can't cast wait. Terry Bradshaw. To Who else is on sports <laughs> roots yeah. talk shows as the minions? Should we the just star of get James Steel. Brown and Howie Long to play the other minions? Jack, Were there any Jack, other thoughts against it? Jack, Del Toro? Can, you, Jack, can uh, you stop looking at the camera, please? I did, <laughs> Jack, can you stop looking at the huh? I just don't think Del Toro is gonna. He's just. Uh, it's it's. Uh, I don't, what's, he's not gonna. Yeah, based on by can, virtue. Can you give us a, like a style? What would it sound like? Um, well, what is he doing? Uh, usual suspects. Uh, what's the line? Give me the. Give me the fucking keys. Give me the fucking keys. What the fuck? I mean, come on. He's almost doing a minion in that movie. It's like it's not hard to imagine that part. That was the um, most fun Benicio del Toro's ever had in a movie, and that was I twenty the, years ago. The the, the 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 key to my answer. The key to my answer. Uh, Benicio del Toro is a good one. You could plug a lot of different uh, uh, actors in there, uh, but the key to my answer is that he is playing all of the minions. Uh, uniformity. He is able to create these separate characters. It's easier on so the production. So he's playing different it's minions. Gonna, he just he, he's yeah, acting them all out. It's, okay. Yes, exactly. He's, it's going to cost the production a lot less money, uh, first of all, and um, and uh, I, I I would cast Benicio del Toro on everything. Once he grew as well. No. <laughs> okay, okay, good. Just a second. No, I'm using that as your final thoughts. Hal, go ahead. Final thoughts. One thing you notice about the minions when you watch the movie, they, they many of them look the same, but they've got these different personalities. So Jack Black would be the live wire. Shaq would be the more stoic one. And Betty White would be the wise older one who gives birth to all the minions. There is going to be Let's a see. very graphic <laughs> birthing scene where she gives birth yeah. to all of these minions and they rise out of this, ooh, this, uh, uh, like you're, this afterbirth. You're horrible. You know, that, <laughs> Thank you. Horrible Thank you. Person. Both of these movies sound like something in a grotesquerie. I mean, Benicio <laughs> Del Toro couldn't play one wolf man. I don't think he's going to play 8,000 minions. He was I'm as the wolf man. I'm I agree with that. Give, <laughs> I'm trying to give this movie a shot. I'm trying to do the best we can to salvage this, and I've got two people that I think are funny. And again, who amongst us wouldn't be, at the very least, morbidly curious to see what De Niro could do? This could be the greatest or the worst performance of his life. I mean, I think that ship has sailed after them. Bullwinkle. Uh, well, I, at least I'm not defiling him. I think him it would somehow manage to... Betty White. Like, I've stopped being sad at watching Robert De Niro in some of these movies, but I think that would manage... That would, that would manage to, like, the, really tug at me. That that could be, the, you know, the, you know, turn around. You can turn right. it around. I heard enough. Uh, Lon, anything to add? Uh, so Betty White and Shaq actually collaborated on a PSA in 2011. Oh, well, you can look it up. It was to so end they child chemistry abuse. Already. So uh -huh. they, they have some on screen chemistry. She is 95 years uh, young right now, <laughs> yeah. Benicio, by the way. Mm -hmm. uh, Benicio Del Toro, one upbeat role I was able to find his film debut, Duke the Dog Faced Boy in Big Top Pee Wee. It's true. Hmm. A very oh, upbeat, yeah. fun role. Well, well, uh, well. A lot of other interesting suggestions Michael Caine, Anthony Hopkins, Sean Connery. Adam Sandler, it's Rob Schneider, Connery Kevin out. James, sure. uh, Rob Corddry, John Stewart, and Stephen Colbert I'm with Carell as <laughs> uh, Wesley Snipes, Woody Harrelson, Rosie Perez, and then uh, building off of Rob's suggestion, just having Jim Carrey play all of them came up a bunch of times. Sure. 
Sure. Okay. Buy that. Uh, wow. All right. Good. Good. Weird suggestions. All right. Look. <laughs> uh, yeah. Which was into, I thought he had a sort of a going against him since he picked one person, but he sort of did sell me as to why that might be actually better because the the other two of you had some oddity in there that didn't end up helping your your ingredients. I should have rhymed that last one. Yeah. If you'd rhymed it, it might have helped. <laughs> yeah, that uh, was the problem. And with then that. yeah, I think Rob got you there at Tim the end stack. as to how sad it would be to see De Niro resort to that last thing. So. Uh, Rob, you get the second point. Yay! Yeah! Congratulations. Yeah. All right, round four. In honor of The House, starring Will Ferrell and uh, Amy Poehler coming out, uh, uh, what existing movie franchise deserves an installment in Las Vegas? Uh, that's what we're talking about. Take any movie franchise. Put it wherever you want. Yeah. But it hasn't done it yet. Put it its sequel in Vegas, and how we're back to you to start. Well, I'm going with Planet of the Apes. We have an evil casino over, uh, owner who has taken these apes and has made them an attraction at his casino. People can come and see, like in a big like terrarium in the middle of the casino, these apes. Uh, oh, look at the apes who are smart. Look at these apes who uh, who uh, like can talk. Can, can you talk to an ape? Can you want to take some pictures with apes? They put shock collars on the apes and uh, make them behave and interact with human beings. God damn it, Andy Circus is not going to stand for that. The apes will not stand for that. They Andy Circus played the uh he, he yes. does yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, he does all Caesar. the quite, quite yes. a, Caesar. emotionally, uh, you know, yes. potentially Academy Award nominated role. He leads an uprising <laughs> to take down this casino, Ape World. They run through the the spa they destroy the spa they destroy the casino and the apes run free and the last we see they're running through the desert to freedom got it we okay jailbreak yeah, when we come back you have to explain where that fits in the current so uh, much franchise to dan talk up, you're about next. there uh the question is, is what movie franchise deserves a movie in Vegas? And I think unquestionably the current franchise that deserves a movie in Las Vegas is the Transformers franchise. Because when I think Transformers, I think of Michael Bay. And Las Vegas has everything that Michael Bay loves. Uh, Half-naked women, foam parties, uh, a bunch Full of things that women. are branded and sponsored. <laughs> Three-quarter uh, naked women. Uh, <laughs> bright lights, noises. So many things that could keep him he entertained. He does love bright, bright lights and noises. It's, it's what he brings he to the that. screen in every movie that he makes. So why not just cut out the middleman and make a Transformers movie in Vegas? You can destroy any number of landmarks. So many reasons for you know Bumblebee to stumble into a pool party or something. Thing and he can put his camera on whomever he wants and find the next Megan Fox. I don't know. It's what he does. Uh, Vegas Vic can be a Transformer. Uh, all those lights and stuff turned into Transformers. Th being in Las Vegas, the only thing that I would analogize to a Transformers movie is being in a Las Vegas casino and it's just constant input and just constant distraction and noise and sound and I don't know where to focus and it makes me slightly nauseous uh, and it's better if you're drunk. Uh, so I am saying the Transformers is the franchise that deserves a movie in Vegas. Vegas because it's essentially the movie version of Las Vegas anyway. Why do we we'll just stop pretending? Rob, where are you going? Um, well, you know what? I, I agree with a lot of what Dan said about um, about Transformers in that it is the type of movie that would be funny to watch or fun to watch in Las Vegas. But it also would be very gratuitous set there. Um, but you do need an action, a big budget action franchise. Uh, and that's why I picked uh, Jurassic Park, the Jurassic Park franchise. Um, you know, the, the, it could be even be called the Jurassic Hotel and Casino. Uh, because Jurassic Park has built into it that it's an attraction already. So it would seem that if in this reality um, they have, uh, you know, they have uh, replicated the DNA of dinosaurs, then the first pe I can't believe they haven't done it already, as a matter of fact. The first people that are going to jump on that as an attraction uh, is, is, the, is, is Las Vegas. Got it. So we have a Las Vegas installment that I imagine will go run amok. Uh, great. So we have Planet of the Apes, Transformers, Jurassic Park. Uh, I, wow. Go for it, guys. <laughs> uh, well, Planet of the Apes, that's 
you, you literally just told the story of what just happened, except it's in Las Vegas. Yeah, that's a it's, serialized. It's a worse like, version of what we already just <laughs> got with the Planet of the Apes franchise. It's a serialized franchise. What do you mean like, talking about war? We've already planets. moved. It's almost. Yeah. It's already oh, the uh, end of the no, world. This, this, far past this, Vegas. This, far past uh, Las Vegas this, is no more. This, this my story is. It's. It's. It's not a sequel or a prequel. It's an in betweenquel. Are we ready it's for gonna, a reboot? Wait, are we is talking a re- Charlton Heston version? No. It, it's. It's the current. It's the current one. This one right, comes in like. In between so right one when and the, two, when the world's falling at the end of the James Franco one, so it's yes. like a, yeah. it's like a, um, it's like a like a Rogue One. Uh, yes, it's like a, very a, much a, a Planet of the Apes story. Yeah, I, this, <laughs> huh. We have uh, we have a very tightly told story yeah. going, happening with these new Apes movies. They They've really got it on. Track. They've really gone out of their way to really like tell a pretty <laughs> tight <laughs> story. All right, still gonna hear all the this weird Vegas. Yeah, exactly. Tom in between. Like, yes. yeah. Dawn it's, and Rise, as if that wasn't confusing That's what enough. Apes needs. Is what are you Vegas calling vacation? it? We yeah. went from Dawn to ri- Rise to Dawn. No, Dawn then no, Rise. It's Rise to Dawn. Rise to and war. Dawn. So what's the call- title in between Rise and Dawn? Planet of the Apes. Oh, uh, um, what stays in the planet? What happens <laughs> in Planet of the Apes? <laughs> the you know what? That's <laughs> better than anything. I would right, have right, got it. All right, I got it in my picture. Let's yes. talk about Transformers, guys. Yeah. Thoughts against Transformers? Oh my god. Well, it just it's like I said. Like it, there's there's no reason to put it in Las Vegas. <laughs> it's it's be it would be the perfect movie to you. They can you can watch Las Vegas get destroyed if there was a good reason. For that, for it to be in Las Vegas. All right, like, can I just cut through the bullshit here? Sure. <laughs> All three of these are terrible. So which one? Son of a bitch. Which one would we <laughs> rather see? Why do I want to see trans- I, another I, Transformers in Vegas? Well, why would I want to ruin the legacy of Planet of the Apes and stick a Vegas version? <laughs> and why would I want Jurassic Park to go to Vegas? Because Tell it's me, an attraction what's already. What's the one here that's the, the easiest sell? Well, I think that there's potential Jurassic. left in both of these franchises. Even as much as I hated Jurassic World, I will agree that there's potential left for a Jurassic World mm-hmm. sequel. I hope. You just ruined the greatest retelling of Planet of the Apes that we could possibly have gotten. <laughs> so obviously, I don't want to see that one. I, where, there's nowhere to. There's no bottom. Every time you think you found the bottom of Transformers, you find another one. And I feel like, what, what, what do you have to lose? But see, that what seems like it's not lose? a heightening of the Transformers. Um, but Transformers myth. deserves to be uh, in Vegas. It, 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 it's a no. It deserves much. I mean, they have a, a hard job ahead of them in the next installment because in this one, if I understand it correctly, they're like that they've always been here with us, even back in like medieval times. Um, so that's like they have a hard time already trying to heighten that in the next movie. But they'll forget all about it. But by like, the next one. it doesn't matter. They are hey, not Bay everything. man. Not <laughs> Bay. Bay never forgets. Yeah. Bay never forgets. Plus, um, I think we've seen the dinosaurs in the city thing with the, uh, you know, Jurassic World was kind of like a little mini Vegas. And we've seen why them in haven't Diego. we seen the Vegas Jurassic World? Like, why haven't we seen that? It's pretty far in How, last thoughts to try and salvage this for you? Evil casino owner John Goodman oh, Jesus. wants to use these primates to feather his own nest. <laughs> And he doesn't realize what he's asking for because they exact revenge. The, I mean, just seeing those the, these uh, these monkeys, these apes running amok in Vegas—that's the most fun. Th- this will be the most so it's fun like movie a out of these three. Of the yeah. It's yeah. a by little the, spoofy. Is it by the epic movie guys? It's a little spoofy. Yeah. It, no, it, I mean it's, it's, it's not by, the by a, a, Asylum or Epic Movie, but um, it's a different. It's a bit of a different flavor. But you have this guy who's trying to <laughs> um, make that. An attraction. All right, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's there. Uh, <laughs> the only thing I was able to find is in, uh, an in between quill. It's called an interquell. There are some examples. 300 Rise of an Empire came up a lot because that is told, it's that set concurrently to the first film. They're happening sort of simultaneously. That's about the best uh, case I could find for what Hal is suggesting to do with the apes. <laughs> Franchise, uh, other suggestions, Ant-Man, Mission Impossible came up the most, uh, Medea, Jason Bourne was in Fast in and Vegas. Furious, oh, uh, and oh, yeah. Avengers. Fast and the Furious was never in Vegas either? I don't think they've wow. been in Vegas. No, usually they, they go so they many places. They were in places. Dubai, yeah. so they've done memorable skyscraper stuff, but I don't think there's a Vegas one. <laughs> this one's rough. Uh, <laughs> I'd go to sorry, the movies Hal, for memorable I don't want to ruin that trilogy. <laughs> uh, yeah, you probably could have looked up where they were at in the trilogy currently. It might have helped you yeah, there. You got I, a lot I, of balls, I know where they are. You got a lot of balls. <laughs> uh, so then it came down to Transformers and Jurassic Park, and I, I, I don't want to see another Transformers ever again. Uh, I, and as, as Rob pitched it, I wouldn't mind seeing the dinosaurs evade. Uh, it kind of was already what we saw a little bit. Uh, 
Cordial. And even you admitted they could do their sequel, and I think we all don't want another Transformers sequel. So, wow, Rob, you're a god. Three points up. That's crazy. He's a wow. god at this game. <laughs> uh, the, the, what did they say online? The poll, 50% uh, went with Jurassic Park, and yeah. then even. 25% apes, 25% Transformers. Yeah, I think Jurassic what are they Park saying about me, like, looks-wise? <laughs> what are they saying about me, like, <laughs> Well, Rob, God-like. you're so far in the lead, I think it's good to do another plug here for you, because uh, you're, you're not here for your health. Come on, let's be honest. <laughs> uh, no, but I wanted to tell everybody, because you have a wonderful movie. Uh, it's available, uh, the sh- show on uh, Netflix right now, Shimmer Lake. Yeah, it's available. Really they can go watch right after this show. It's really yes? good. Yes. Go on and oh, check it out right now. you can shut this show off yeah. right now and watch <laughs> That's it. Why I was <laughs> shut it off, go watch it after, for real. And then also, don't forget Ballers, uh, July 23rd third on HBO is coming back. That must be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. There's nothing not fun about doing that show, especially now that we shoot in um, Los Angeles. Oh, that makes it a lot Uh, easier. With all apologies to uh, (laughs) the viewers in in Miami, but um, there's not a lot for me in Miami. Right. Uh, So, uh, you know, so, yeah, there's, there's really, like, it's the perfect job. And you get to be with DJ all the time. I get to be with the Deej. Yeah. Yeah, hanging. Hanging, just chilling. Just working out. <laughs> do you, you drink, know? like, do you eat his, like, chicken and protein shakes? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I, but I watch him after, even three seasons into it, I'm just like, because he watch has, him. someone just delivers. He's every, got a barrel every, of ding. chicken and rice, like, <laughs> at the weirdest times of the Good day. Good for him, man. <laughs> it's amazing. All right, well, yes, please check out Shimmer Lake on Netflix and uh, Ballers on it's July 23rd over on HBO. Go set your TiVos and things. Um, all right, question number five. With the news of The Accountant 2, we want you to pitch us another Ben Affleck movie sequel. Now, it can't be one that's already in development. I don't think there are any other sequels in development, are there? Uh, well, Batman. Yeah. yeah, aside from that. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you can, and I guess you could pick Accountant 2, but let's try and be more creative. What's another Ben Affleck movie from the past that we want to reprise uh, his character in? Uh, we're up to you, Dan. What are you picking? I am picking, and this would be a controversial pick, but I am picking Pearl Harbor 2. And the reason that I am picking this is that, and some people say, like, well, that's very insensitive. Well, so is Pearl Harbor. Uh, the movie oh, Pearl Harbor was incredibly yes. insensitive. <laughs> and I feel like the only way to retroactively make that better is to take it so over the top that no one would even regard the first one as historically accurate or representative of anything that ever happened in any way. So it's Pearl Harbor 2, the search for Hitler. You get uh, Ben oh, Affleck, you. you get Rafe McCauley out of retirement, and it's a, it's a, it's a globe hop quest, there's treasure Rafe hunts. McCauley Rafe McCauley? Rafe McCauley is his name. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that is his name. Rafe McCauley. He's on a globe trident quest. There's, there's. You have to that dive to the bottom of the ocean. Of that real McCauley. historical person. real historical person is Rafe McCauley. <laughs> Amongst the literally hundreds of real life heroes that you could have honored appropriately in a Pearl Harbor movie, they chose Rafe McCauley, uh, the fake one. And uh, really, it's just to delegitimize the first one. I, I feel like most of Affleck's movies have not been uh, that great, and I feel like the good ones you don't want sequels to if it's a good one. So. Is Michael Bay coming back? Oh, yeah. No, I, I told you, you have to delegitimize the first okay. one, so you gotta bring Bay back, uh, so there's gonna, I mean, you can even cross up. Transformer show up? Well, that's the thing. He, he, he has already established <laughs> now is... that a pocket watch Transformer killed Hitler. Yes, he will okay. be teaming up with the pocket watch Transformer oh, so Bumblebee. This, is like, this ties the universe this together. This ties the whole Transformer wow. and Harborverse wow. together, and really, I think this is the only way to wipe away what was done in that first movie, which was really, again, very and truly, I think, insensitive. Uh, so let's just go back and try to erase the first one, too, and take this thing all the way over the top. Because Affleck gets a lot of bad press, and I think if you get a good movie, don't don't push your luck by making a sequel. All right, Rob, what sequel are you pitching us? <laughs> um, I'm still not on board with um, Affleck as Batman. That's still a big hiccup for me. Mm-hmm. I can't, I just can't, um, can't, uh, he takes me out of it every time he comes on screen. So, um, I was thinking, like, well, what is a movie, what is a, a franchise that he's been in that I wouldn't mind getting vitamin afflect? And, um, <laughs> and it would be the Jack Ryan series. Oh, yeah. You know, some of, some all, of, fears. Some of all fears. Yeah. yeah. Um, because you can't go wrong, with, but it, it won't have his dirty fingerprints all over it either. It would just be like somebody else is writing it, somebody else is directing it. He's just playing. The Jack Ryan character that everybody has loved for for decades in books and now in movies, and um, and he you know he doesn't have to do much, he doesn't have to he he can just um, say his say his words make them believable, and uh, and the and the rest is magic. Do you have a title for this one? Uh, well, the sum of all fears divided by two. Uh, <laughs> multiplied by I don't know. Yeah. Divided by two. I love divided it. by two. Could be a romance there too. Yeah. Mm. 
right. Oh, there's gonna be romance. Yeah. Don't right. worry about that. Uh, Hal, what sequel are you pitching? Gotta get on the board here. Armageddon 2, we're Armageddon the band back together. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's present day. Ben Affleck and Liv Tyler have a beautiful family together. Life is good. Then the phone rings. Liv Tyler picks it up on the other end of the line. Hey, it's dad. What? We thought Bruce Willis died on that rock. No. He was blown into outer space and picked up by an alien vessel. Oh. This alien vessel <sighs> took him. Oh, sorry. He was. Sorry. He said he was it blown up. Don't screw up. this up. Yeah, no. He said, <laughs> he, said, he, said he was blown. He said, okay. So he returns to Earth and he says he was picked up by an alien vessel. Turn out it was just a piece of his DNA that the aliens found. And they made a Bruce Willis and sent him back to Earth with that story to lay the groundwork for them to send a rock to destroy Earth again. Oh, so Ben Affleck has to get Steve Buscemi and the rest of the gang a CGI'd. Uh, Michael Clark Duncan, the whole group. Oh, okay? The whole group. I thought Pearl Harbor 2 would be the most offensive part the, of all of these yeah, pitches. Right? You just outdid it. You outdid the whole me. group is back together to stop Bruce Willis and his alien compadres from destroying the Earth. Wait, sorry. I don't know why I'm asking for more clarity, but we're I'm going to try. Yeah. We're <laughs> Armageddon the band back no, together. That was Bruce, we didn't Bruce Willis came back to recruit them, or that was alien Bruce Willis? Oh, it was alien Bruce Willis. So, yeah, so it was do a, they a, know? A piece, so you just said they wanted to go against the I assume aliens. they're going to find out. So yeah, they're yeah, teaming yeah, up, but then they realize, yeah, they, oh, this he's working with the aliens, and they have to change they, they find course. out, and Bruce Willis, he's trying to sabotage Got the it. whole okay. team, now I, now and then Steve Buscemi kills him by stabbing him in the head with a screwdriver. Okay. All Ooh. right, guys. What do you think here? Uh, well, can, 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 may I? Yeah, please. May I? Please. May I? Because I'm offended by both of these. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to imagine, like, put yourself in an actual, like, room at uh, whatever DreamWorks, and, and you're getting pitched a movie. You're going to pitch a movie. Like, what movie here would be the most sellable movie? Um, uh, uh, Armageddon. First of all, you say Bruce Willis is a bad guy, you're out the door. That's It's not going to happen. Bruce Willis is not going to play a bad guy. Maybe he could in the past, not anymore. He's too Bruce Willis-y. Um, <laughs> we just won't buy it. Uh, we'll be it'll to have that ripped away from us as a viewer, not just as as the characters in the movie. To to have he was ripped away from them once before, and he's going to get ripped away again mm -hmm. a, a, as a as a fraud. How dare you, sir? Um, and and um, Pearl Harbor Two: The Search for Hitler. I feel like this the better joke of the three is that one for sure like if this was a if, uh, well, to no, come up with to come up with the funniest to come up with the funniest one sir. I'd say you definitely win uh, because like the search for Hitler first of all Hitler had nothing to do with Pearl Harbor it was the Japanese it was the uh, well, is yeah, this during this, the this war, is, or was it after no, the Hitler after escaped? The war. No, it's during the war. <laughs> <laughs> These are the questions you're going to get in the pitch room, Dan. Here's no. <laughs> they yes. don't know how history works yeah, in those pitch rooms. Exactly. No, no, this is during the war. Yes, we did the Pearl Harbor part. That was the early part. This is the European front. This is the sequel. Michael Bay, again, Mike, again this Pearl is not Harbor, be a historical the European documentary. front. Yes. I mean, Keep in mind, like... Michael Bay is making this movie, so none of it matters. This right. is He just put Bumblebee back in World Wasn't War II Wasn't this movie time. called Inglorious Bastards? hung Nazi banners from oh, Winston man, Churchill's oh, house for this latest Transformers movie. So if you think he cares about history, That's a he good does point. not. This is, again, delegitimizing everything that has come before. Uh, yeah, Armageddon 2, uh, since it is a Michael Bay movie, like yeah. I feel like that ending of Armageddon was one of the very few times that he was able to wring actual human emotions out of any actor, much less Bruce Willis. And why and would you want to go back and undo that amazing... Like That was a 
genuinely heartfelt ending yeah. to that movie you're, where he's on the screen saying goodbye to Liv Tyler. You're and putting it past that? Michael Bay to wring more blood from that stone? No, I'm just saying you're undoing one of the legitimately good pieces of film that he's done, which is the ending of Armageddon and those characters. I don't want to see CGI Michael Clark Duncan. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my God, me? man. I mean, maybe, maybe like his son, like they get his son who exactly. just knows how to kick yeah. ass too. Michael that's Clark great. Duncan, you know, Jr. Freddie Clark Duncan, <laughs> um, or whatever. But but that's just like every part of that movie is. Te- I would I would think like Armageddon would be a good answer if it were just like simple like, hey, there's a bunch there's locusts uh, around now the the the, the seas are boiling and they're turning to blood and and Bruce and then you see not Bruce uh, uh, Ben Affleck in a coffee shop turn around and he's like, what did you say? It's happening again. You know that I'll, I'll buy I guess for the purposes of uh, of of this discussion, but like. What happened to Chris Pine though? Because we already have another Jack Ryan. We had uh, was a Shadow. Yeah. Shadow. I don't know if people want yeah. to see Jack Ryan. That's my big thing with yours is I'm not sure even Affleck would get people back on board with Jack Ryan. I think Chris Pine. I think how on. dare you, sir? I Affleck, think that was the peak of Jack Ryan. Affleck like, needs I don't care this. So much. We need Affleck in this. We don't want Chris Pine to do any. Chris Pine is off doing important things that we enjoy seeing him in. Aerosmith um, has agreed to do a new song for this oh, Armageddon what's it called? Too. Well, of course they have. <laughs> uh, open your eyes. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't look sold on that one. <laughs> okay. Oh, uh, man. Yeah. All right, I, final thought there, Hal, quickly. The aliens got Bruce Willis's <laughs> DNA and ah. send this rogue agent to Earth to try to lay the groundwork and stop this crew. They stop Bruce Willis at the last minute and they save the day. Man, it, it's it, it's going to be huge. It's amazing. It's going to be huge. Okay, yeah. Dan, final thoughts. Uh, I mean, I I don't know if any of these are particularly good ideas. <laughs> I think that mine is at least writing a wrong that was done with the original Pearl Harbor or trying to and retroactively making it more ridiculous. Uh, I hope so. Uh, other than that, yeah, I just think that's kind of another Jack Ryan movies uh, we didn't care about the last Jack Ryan movie that came out and even if Affleck's back I still don't think I'm going to care about it and I really don't want him to I mean Armageddon again Michael Bay that's one of the good ones and I don't want to see that wiped off the board getting it Rob, again do you want to make money I always like making money do you want to make money sure <laughs> Jack Ryan it's a sure thing it's safe here in the studios we like to we like to every once in a while just release a safe movie we know we're gonna we know we're gonna make our money back on this one <laughs> Yeah, that's why he played the, the Jack Ryan again after some of all fears. Because it right. made so much money. That's right. And uh, and uh, and just Bruce Willis as a bad guy is just like that's that's the, my that's my biggest hiccup out of all that. What nonsense. a career turn. And um, and I think you're doubling down on the 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 offense of Pearl Harbor by making it the search for Hitler. If there's anything Michael Bay loves, it's doubling down on being offensive, and that's what this movie is. He's a wonderful storyteller. <laughs> All right, Juan. Uh, wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> nobody on Twitter wants to see CGI Michael Clark Duncan. <laughs> really? Not Has one a suggestion person. gone over words? More people wanted to see Betty White give birth to minions <laughs> than CGI that's Michael Clark something. Duncan. Uh, Shadow Recruit, a $60 million budget, only made $50 million domestic, a worldwide gross of $135.5 million. Interestingly, Pearl Harbor was the only film in history to receive both an Oscar and a Razzie nomination for Worst Picture, but that was just until last year when Suicide Squad did it again. Mm -hmm. Uh, Other other movies that were suggested, Phantoms 2 people want to see, Dazed and Confused 2, Gone Girl 2. The mm. number one selection from Twitter was The Gone Town it. 2. A lot of people the want to town. see The Town, oh, the town 2. Yeah. I thought about Serious Gone Girl answers. 2. Like, still gone. <laughs> In retrospect, <laughs> Further maybe. Further gone. Going and going and going. <laughs> going, yeah, going, yeah, going. Yeah, retrospect, yeah. maybe. Because, yeah, I'm st- I'm, here's where I'm... T- I mean, come on, CJ might... You might have won <laughs> if you didn't go so weird, Hal. <laughs> I mean, God, I was rooting for you. Yeah. A lot of people online were saying Armageddon 2 really worked for yeah, them, but this but your plot pitch points, did not so much. Yeah, yeah. I mean, funny, but, but then Dan almost went funnier, but I don't want to see Dan's either. Uh... And yeah, I don't want to. You're right. I don't want to undo the one emotional <laughs> acting moment right. Michael Bay was able to make. Uh, so it did come down to Pearl Harbor two, and and some of all feared's divided by two. Uh, <laughs> Rob was, dude, but then you the sure thing that it's gonna make money. No, it's not. It's a sure thing. No, it's <laughs> a, it's a, a sure thing. thing there is. It's a sure so you thing. had me, and then you lost me when you said that. That said, 
Ah, yeah, you did thankfully, again, your last thoughts give me the point that you are doubling down on the atrocities of what Pearl Harbor did. So just for that alone, I got to give Rob the next point. Guys, we're going to make a lot of money on this. Wow. We're Holy gonna make, moly. We're going to make a middling amount of money on this. Well, <laughs> what that means is, well, so yeah, I don't need a tiebreaker. How? Nope. That means, sorry, no, you're not in this now. You're going to have me judge this. All uh, right. Rob, you made it to the end against Dan with one point, so you're in by one. You have a big uh, Ooh, uh, deficit you got to yeah. catch up here in the speed round. This is my worst performance on movie fights yeah, in more ways Rob, than one. Rob hustled <laughs> you all. He's like, I'm going to throw it at the end. And then he look at him. He didn't. Oh, he, man. he can't even do and it. I he am was so drunk dominant. right now. <laughs> <laughs> so drunk. All right, well, you don't even know how this works. This will be fun nah. for you. Speed round. We have five extra quick questions. Yep. You'll have to answer quickly. I'm going to answer the question. Uh, uh, re read the question. You'll each have to answer quickly at the same time. If you both say the same answer, it's whoever said it first. So okay. in this instance, you have to say it quickly. Then you'll take a moment. We'll set the clocks, and you'll each have 20 seconds each to argue your point. This is the speed version of the show. You'll then have 10 second rebuttals. I'll explain it again as we go. Okay. But the bottom line of all you need to worry about first is get ready to yell out your answer as quickly as you think of it. Oh boy. Make sense? Yeah. Yes. All right. Speed round music. Let's do this. Whoo! In honor of Ballers, which premieres again, season th four, right? Three? Season, it's a new season, seven, it's July 23rd. Oh, Ballers yeah, 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 season, season three. three right, I yeah. was getting all prepped sorry, for sorry. the Sorry, <laughs> I just want to make sure yes. I'm prepping this. Go check it out, HBO, season three, seven, uh, on July 23rd. Um, in honor of Ballers, what movie, what movie character would you hire to be your agent? Uh, Tom uh, Cruise in The Color of Money. Tom, uh, not, not Color Money, in a, a Tom Cruise in that uh, a movie where he plays an agent. <laughs> I need a name. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, f fuck that. <laughs> um, uh... Dan's thinking. He's like, am I going to take that? Or am I th can I think of something better? Oh, jeez. Uh, mine would be Ricky Roma from uh, Glengarry Glen Ross. Ricky Al Pacino's Roma. character. Okay, so Dan got Ricky Roma. Oh, wow. Uh, Rob, can you think of uh, the Tom Cruise character? No. What no, I can't. Can you think of any movie character that would be good? Uh, any movie, movie character at all. Um, what was it? Rob who? Ricky Roma. Oh, that's right. Ricky Roma. Yeah, that's a good one. I yeah, yeah. Ricky Roma. Um, Doesn't have to be an actual sports person. Right, 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 right. Uh, I, for my agent, uh, it would be uh, the perfect choice would be um, Thor. 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 Got it. Chris. <laughs> I feel like I just gave birth to <laughs> You were thinking of Jerry Maguire is what you were looking sure for. Sure was. Okay. Name yeah. of the movie. <laughs> yep. That's the name of the movie. <laughs> all right. We have, uh, all right. Ricky Roma versus Thor. Dan, you're first. Al Pacino's character, Ricky Roma, and Glengarry Glen Ross. It's about guys who can't sell anything. They're all terrible salesmen. They have, they're selling crap. They're selling the worst things, and no one can sell anything except for Ricky Roma. Even when he has nothing to sell, he will make that sale. He will make you rich. He will make himself rich. And that's what you want in a sports agent. You want a guy that's going to do anything to make that sale, to make the best deal that you can get. You don't want some guy who's going to sit back and... Okay, you'll have 20 seconds when I, you get speaking, and you'll hear I the I don't bell. need the 20 seconds. I only need about uh, five. Use the time as you will. Time will begin when you begin speaking. Thor is a god. <laughs> I'm done. Done. All right. All right. <laughs> a ballsy moment there. Dan, you have 10 second rebuttal. I think an important thing in an agent is being able to reach that agent, and I don't want to try to call him and find out he's in another dimension, or he's on Asgard, or he's fighting the Hulk. <laughs> Ricky Roma's got his cell phone, he's got that big brick phone, and he's ready for your call 24 hours a day. All right, you have 10 seconds when you begin speaking. Yep. Uh, Ricky Roma was only having a hot streak. That's mentioned in the movie. That was the whole point, is that everybody has their hot streaks. When he loses that hot streak, he's just a loser like the rest of them. Thor is a god. <laughs> All right, he did come back there at the end and helped a little bit. Hal, based on those arguments, what do you think? You know what? Um, Dan made a good point until I really thought about it. Agents can be tough to get on the phone sometimes. That's part of the biz. That's part of the deal. Man, I, man, uh, my old manager, that purpose. son of a bitch wouldn't return my calls. Um, so just for that reason, uh, I got to go with the ballsy choice of Thor. He did go ballsy there, Lon. I, I mean, I, it was, did, it, did the ballsy work for you or not work for you? There was one thing I really wanted to hear from Rob, which is why being a god would make you a better agent. I don't think mm. we quite threaded that needle. We heard he is a god, but so I want to know what what's godly about being an agent? Why would God help? So I think Ricky Roma. 
Uh, yeah, but, but then he did give me the point of the hot streak. He did. He didn't just stay there. He did give me a reason why Ricky might not actually be there. Oh, it's tough. But yeah, we I got. I we think uh, Ricky was a pretty good salesman. We do see him. Yeah, he's a good. I, see he, I got a little bit extra. At Dan. It was. If you're right, if he had just given me one more little line, I think I would have given uh, the ballsy choice there to People Rob. People worship like him. He can Dan, snap you, get a, you get another point. So oh, there we man. go. So you got the first point. So we're four to two. All right. Stolen yes. From, that was All right. The first one's there. All right. Here we go. What is the best movie with the word baby in the title? Any movie with the word baby in the title. Baby Driver. Um, uh, bringing up baby. Ah, mm. there we go. Two good films Very there. Good mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Dan, you're up first. When time begins, when you begin speaking. I think Baby Driver shows the director and Edgar Wright working today at the height of his power, as Hal would say. I think that it is a masterclass of what you can do with cinema, what you can do with sound, what you can do with editing, what you can do with humor, what you can do with so many different elements of film all combined into one movie. It's a borderline musical experimental crime drama. I don't think there's anything quite like it out there or one that I've seen uh, in any other time. Bringing Up Baby is a good movie, but it... All right, classic. Time begins, speaking. Yeah, it's a classic. Bringing Up Baby is a classic. They didn't even need color for this movie. It's so damn good. They were like, nah, we're not even going to bother. They could have done it. They could have colored it. Nah, don't, don't, don't need it. We just got a great story. We got a great story. But Baby Driver hasn't proven itself yet in the long run, in the long term. All right, there's his time. Ten seconds, Dan. Bring Up Baby is a good movie, but I think it's a good movie that fits into a genre with other similar movies. I think it's a good as part of a pack of other movies. I think that Baby Driver stands alone. It's singular. It is unique. It's not like any other movie out there. That's what makes it stand out for me over Bringing Up Baby. All right, you'll have ten seconds here, Rob. Use them wisely. Well, we don't, we don't know that because uh, because Baby Driver hasn't uh, stood the test of time yet, and the test of time is what uh, proves uh, th a good movie, what, what makes a movie good. All right, Lon, yeah. based on those arguments. Uh, well, I mean, I, I... We heard more from Dan, Yeah, I was gonna say got the, some strong statements out. I think the, the test of time argument was effective, but I think I just, I heard a lot more from Dan, and uh, having not even seen Wait, Baby Driver... Wait, is this who can say more words? Sometimes. Well, just more, I heard more <laughs> arguments that were, that were contained in more words. Yeah, so, you yes. got a little bit more points out. Uh, Hal, but what do you think? Oh, man, so tough. I mean, uh... Oof. I mean, Dan made a really compelling uh, argument. Yeah. I mean, uh, Bring Up Baby stood the test of time, but yeah, Dan just had all these points. Yeah, well, you said something interesting. Is like, for those who don't know, Bring Up Baby is, you, even if you just listed some of the, the, the actors and some things about it, it might have helped reaffirm it. So, right. well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, I got to give Dan the slight edge there. So, you, yeah, we're losing that, that streak you had there, Robbie. Sorry, you just got to yeah, get had one. Baby in the title. Next sorry, time, man. just yes, spout out anything you can about oh, it. Here we go. Geez, here I apologize. We go. That is a travesty. Oh, I'm so man. sorry. Uh, in honor of this week's new Jumanji trailer. Mm. This is a rematch question from episode 24. Mm. What's the best movie featuring Jack Black? School of Rock. Oh, you suck. <laughs> you suck. Oh, man. Oh, pass. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yeah, because he's right. He's right. <laughs> it's School right. of Rock. I it? mean, yeah. I might just help him get this point. Can yeah. I offer up my minions pitch? No. <laughs> no. All right. Uh, well, no. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna say one? I'm. I'm gonna say uh, High Fidelity. Oh, yeah. all right, there you go. You're yes. still in this. Ooh. Thought you were about to give that up yeah, and you didn't I was. like that. All I right, was. here we go. Two good films. Again, best movie. So right, uh, best movie featuring Jack Black. It's not best Jack Black movie. Best yeah. movie. Here we go. Uh, Dan, you're up first. Putting aside the fact that I don't think any other movie captured Jack Black's essence the way that School of Rock did, I think it is such a joyful story from Richard Linklater about just the joy of music and how kids can express themselves and about how adults don't always have to be the ones against them, that, that adults can help you be the person that you want to be. And the idea that kids don't have to conform and be in this thing to be themselves. I think kids and adults can look at it. Kids. Um, Jack Black showed, well this was when we first met Jack Black, really, in High Fidelity, and it's one of his strongest performances because of, of he's a supporting character and he supports the, the leads on their journey, uh, John Cusack's uh, journey, and, and for that reason I, alone I think it shows restraint 
and uh, and yet still you get that taste of Jack Black. And again, best movie featuring Jack Black. Why is yours the better movie? Dan, you're up next. Ten seconds. I think School of Rock has something for everybody. I think kids can watch it and take something away from it. Adults can watch it and take something away from it. It's funny. It's sweet. It's 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 heartwarming. I think High Fidelity is clever, but it's kind of in that. What, what am I doing? Final now? ten seconds. Why is yours the better movie? Go ahead. Ten seconds. Uh, well, High Fidelity, I think, is the better movie. Uh, um, it's it it's it's uses uh, music, I think, better than most movies I can think of. Uh, Oh, ten seconds, Dan. That wasn't. That was nine seconds. Oh, you seconds. did your ten no, seconds. Yeah, sorry, that was it. That was like I got nine seconds. Got <laughs> <laughs> Hal, based on those arguments, mm, I think. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Dan sold me on it with the rebuttal. He took it in the rebuttal there. Yeah. Lon. Oh, uh, yeah. Again, I, I think. Uh, I think I just heard a lot more good arguments for why School of Rock is a great movie. High Fidelity really just got the the music is used really well, which I agree, and and I love High Fidelity, but I still think I got to give the slight edge to Dan. Yeah, Rob, you're going against the best here. That's why this is tough. But you're, yeah, you're doing well. It's hard. You can I can I vote too? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I vote for School of Rock. I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great All movie. All right, just started again. Good recently. effort. I like to even give up on that. Here we go. All right, number four. Oh, wow, we are now tied. Wait, wait, this is number what? This is number four. Oh, four we got five. Two more. Two more. <laughs> uh, here we go. Number f- to comment uh, to commemorate, to commemorate uh, the twentieth anniversary. Uh, what's the best single element of Batman and Robin? What's the best um, single element of Batman nipples. and Robin? Arnold nipples. Schwarzenegger. Schwarzenegger versus nipples. I love it. Yes. Now again, most compelling praise of the film here, and your reason will will sell me. Okay, so praise us. Why is the why the nipples and uh, Schwarzenegger <laughs> the best part of Batman and Robin? Dan, you're. Oh no, wait, Rob, you're first this time because you said nipples. I heard you first. <laughs> <laughs> I did say nipples. Um, uh, boy, what a bold choice for a Batman costume. It's campy in the in the style of the original show, and um, <laughs> who I I couldn't take. You can't take your eyes off those nipples once they come on screen. I don't care if who's who's on the on there with him. Um, it's uh, that movie should be called uh, Nipples and Robin. <laughs> Damn, up to you, 10 seconds. <laughs> a lot of people laugh at Batman and Robin. I would argue that of everyone involved with that film, including Joel Schumacher, Arnold Schwarzenegger, was the only one who knew what movie he was in. And I would also argue that that is a legitimately great performance as Mr. Freeze because he knew exactly the tone that this movie was going to be. I think he was a step ahead of everybody else on that thing. And he's the only enjoyable thing. He's the only reason to rewatch that. 10 seconds, Rob, use them wisely. I, I disagree. I think Jim Carrey was the, the, the person who knew what movie he was going to. Wait, what? Keep going. Pass. <laughs> <laughs> what am I, wait, what am I supposed to be doing? Wait, why is Arnold Schwarzenegger not as, bad, as bad, good as nipples? Oh, well, because, um, I mean, uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is, has played that role before, and it's. Uh, Okay, you got a point in there for at least. Uh, Dan, final 10 seconds. I think the nipples were the downfall of the franchise, and I think that, again, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the best thing about Batman and Robin, when I rewatch it, it is to watch Arnold Schwarzenegger, the ice puns, the, the delivery. He knew what he was doing in that movie. <laughs> ice to see it? you. <laughs> Him and if McCain, I have to, always, he's the only me. reason. Uh, all right, yeah, but Jim Carrey was in Batman forever. Oh, whatever, right. man. Yeah. Close. So, hey, you were close <laughs> His enough. presence is felt. Uh, all right, uh, Hal, thought based on those arguments. You know, I'm going to give it to Dan, but Nipples and Robin is the funniest thing I've heard in yeah, a long see, time. Yeah, see, I'm going to give Nipples and Robin. Yeah. Sometimes comedy gets the point for me. Yeah. I was going to, but let's see, Lon, you can sway me. Where are you going? Oh, I, I was leaning definitely towards uh, Rob. I feel like Dan, uh, he, made the, he made the Batman Forever mistake, but Dan just kind of repeated a lot that Schwarzenegger sort of knew what he was doing. And I think Uma Thurman also kind of knows she's camping it up in that role as well. So I'm going with Bat Nipples. Right, which Robin said, but it is a point we have to take. It's not, you know, if, if a fact is said, it's not and not fact. We can base it. Because I agree, there's other <laughs> things happening in there. But man, Nipples, are you can't you can't not see him. You can't not see him. <laughs> nipples and Robin was, him. They should have <laughs> called that movie Nipples. And Rob. Yeah, that would have saved it. Uh, <laughs> That's right. So that gives Rob the point. I'm going to go with, yeah, Rob gets the point, but oh, there's man. still one last question here. Um, if you get this, this voice is a tiebreaker. Is that how we do the rules oh, here? Yes. That Christ. is how we so do that, it. Then we have to have two more. Oh, Jesus. Oh, All right, here we go. Uh, this is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you want to. I'm going to name two people, just Rob and Dan, so you're prepared. Okay. So just pre- you're going to hear one and then um, yell which one you want. I'm, it's, not a, it's not a broad choice. I'm, I'm going to list two. Who would you want to see return more? Wesley Snipes as Blade or Ron Perlman as Hellboy? Wesley or, Snipes. 
Oh, Ron Perlin. Okay. Rob got Wesley and Ron for Dan. I think I heard Wesley first, so you're up 20 seconds whenever you're ready. Me? Um, Wesley Snipes and Blade. Yeah. Why do you want to see Wesley Snipes return as Blade more than Ron Perlman as Hellboy? Well, because first of all, we, we uh, Ron Perlman had never went anywhere. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I want to see Wesley Snipes return in, in his best role in in one of the best, up until you know this new Avengers stuff, the best comic book adaptations uh, in, in history of, of movies. It was uh, really good, scary. Damn. I feel like Wesley Snipes and Blade were on a gradual or maybe not so gradual decline as the movies went on. From what you hear from Ryan Reynolds, Pat Oswalt, and other people, most of what you saw was his stand-in in Blade Trinity. I think that Ron Perlman as Hellboy was on an incline. I think people wanted to see more of those. He actually got that character. People loved him as that character. When Guillermo del Toro teased doing a third Hellboy, people were very excited about that. I don't... Ten seconds for Rob. And what am I doing now before Again, you Again, you're fine. Same, same argument. Uh, why you want to see... To combat what he just said, why... Uh, uh, Wesley over Ron Perlman. Yeah, I don't think that's something like that. That will probably happen. I mean, Ron Perlman is in the franchise. The franchise is not dead. Um, however, the the Blade franchise is very much dead. And we... <laughs> Ten seconds, Dan. I think if we're going to get one more movie from either one of these people, it's going to be the one that excited the fans of the comic the most. And I think that's Ron Perlman. I think it's the one that's got the biggest appeal. And I just think Rusty Snipes is overdoing Blade. I don't think he's, he wants to do it anymore. All right, Lon, based on those arguments. Tough, actually. Uh, I, I felt sort of compelling arguments on both sides. But I think uh, I think I got to give the edge to uh, Ron Perlman just because uh, Rob's last sort of remark. Like, it, it is basically dead. I don't feel like we're going to see Ron Perlman as Hellboy anymore. So I, it, the rebuttal it's, didn't really go. Yeah. Uh, which is unfair because he's not as big of a nerd as we are because we follow. Well, I just mean it, yes, uh, that, it's true. David Harbour's taking over for Hellboy, but so I mean, they the, pushed the, Ron Perlman right. out. I just that whole last rebuttal didn't have like a really good singer. Yeah, fair, but I agree. I heard some other good things. But how were you standing? Based um, on those? I didn't hear anything from Dan that got me more excited than uh, Rob saying that like Wesley Snipes has been gone. Yeah, he was taken from us, and now he's back. And to see him take that role again uh, would I find it delightful. Kidnapped. Sorry. <laughs> well, yeah, of his own. Like, yeah, he committed a crime and he was in jail. Yeah. He kidnapped himself. He kidnapped himself. Uh, yeah, he did get me more excited, but I think I heard a little bit more just, again, from Dan. So I, I got to give the point to Dan there. Uh, what puts us in the final tiebreaker oh, thing. Christ. Last question. Uh, and I, I think we have a bargain bin, yes? We do oh, have a bargain, bargain bin. Oh. All right. Let's end on this bargain bin. Right. So what's going to happen, What's Rob, Dan, look at this TV for the final point. I'm going to throw two DVDs up there from a fan. You have to pick which one should we buy, okay? So pick which of the two movies you're gonna see should we buy. Let's reveal the two movies. Oh. <laughs> Norbit. Cat in the Hat. <laughs> All right, what a way to end it. Norbit versus Cat in the Hat. So Rob, tell us why. We should buy, and if you'd like to, would you like the DVD up there to help you? <laughs> sure, why not? Okay, so why not? Let's, let's tell us why are we buying uh, Norbit over Cat in the Hat? That's the reason. I mean, Eddie Murphy as everyone uh, again, and also <laughs> I just want to watch that again to make sure if what I saw in the past was true. You know, it's such a ridiculous movie. It's like uh, that would be an interesting rewatch over the Cat in the Hat. Um, the Cat in the Hat. I mean, I. There's nothing really interesting that happens in, in, in that. Uh, here's the thing about Norbit. I look at Norbit and I see minus one Oscar in Eddie see, Murphy's Dan. hand. I think it has been documented that Eddie Murphy had won that Oscar for Dreamgirls and that went up and it cost him that Oscar. Eddie Murphy would be an Oscar winner if not for that movie. I watch that movie it makes me angry. Cat in the Hat, at least you have the Dr. Seuss story. At least you have that foundation to base on. It's a timeless story. It's a children's classic. You can connect to it wow. some way. Wow, good. All right, this is good. Ten seconds, Rob. Uh, as a matter of fact, my kid said, can we watch Cat in the Hat again? And I was like, oh, God, no. <laughs> not watch that again because look at his face look at mike myers face it's terrifying <laughs> i'd rather just watch eddie murphy fart as different characters <laughs> dan final 10 I seconds i had far less respect to lose for mike myers by the time cat in the hat rolled around than i did for eddie murphy eddie murphy is just depressing it doesn't make me laugh it makes me sad what he was on his way back eddie you were coming back and you did it wow all right this is for all the marbles uh hal based on those arguments where are you going <laughs> Oh man, uh, you know what? Um, 
Mike Myers' face is a, a, a dream haunting, off putting thing. <laughs> it's uh, off-putting. It's yeah, off-putting uh, to yeah. Say I, I, I think I gotta. I, got, I think I gotta go. It's where nightmares go. <laughs> I think I gotta go. Uh, yeah. Also, I want to see that performance that stole the Oscar <laughs> from Eddie Murphy. Yeah, interesting. So, Long yeah. Thoughts? Yeah. I Rob really got me with that argument of like I I need to go back and verify that what I saw was real because that is kind of how I feel about Norbit. So I'm going with Rob. Yeah, well, he got me there, but then, yeah, he took me over the edge with the nightmare fuel. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that, that while I agree it was sad to see it, I, yeah, the, the argument if I want to see why that was so sad and what happened, uh, Rob gets the final point, and Rob gets the win! Wow. Whoa! Wow! Oh. That was an intense battle, sir. So you trucked it through all the way to the end. So exhausting. Wow, what an honor, sir. You really Speed brought it today. Rounds? Not my bag. <laughs> like, I didn't sign up for that part. Not my bag. I, w- I told you guys I was going to throw it if I was winning, you did it. but you I went know. went through. Um, yeah, well, it only took like five questions until you got into it. Luckily, you built enough of a lead to get in there. Oh, my God. Uh, wow. Come back from Dan. Rob wow, Cordry, yeah. what a, you are such a pleasure, sir. I'm so thankful for you this coming on the show and having fun. fun. And I want to make sure everyone in our audience goes and watches uh, uh, Shimmer Lake, available Shimmer now Lake. on Netflix. Check You're it gonna out. You're going to like it. It's yeah, a great movie. For real. Go see it. Uh, click on it right now. Everyone has Netflix who watches us. Well, you've got Netflix. Who doesn't? Jerk. If not, borrow your friend's code yeah, and get in there. Steal the code. Or borrow your friend's HBO I code. Can download and go it on get a Japanese ballers. torrent site. I don't care. <laughs> not my get your movie. HBO Go password from someone and watch Ballers starting again July 23rd. What's happening this season? Is there anything that we can be looking forward to? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's This season's going to be great because, you know, there is a, a, a loose sort of Ballers formula. You know, like, sure. he gets himself into a lot of... He d- dives in too deep. Yeah, how, do they have, like, the entourage the formula there that you try and, try and borrow from ever? <laughs> no. No, 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 no. No, that, that formula burns to touch. <laughs> um, no. Uh, and, 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 but this time it really is, like, they have hei- they've learned how to write this show, and, and it's really heightened in a way that is... Uh, very appropriate. To well, the, to I, the, and I meant early. I liked Entourage. Early Entourage. Yeah, it went to. Like, I, oh yeah, yeah. yeah so early season Entourage. Season one was like yeah, a documentary. It was, great. <laughs> it was like um, a Hollywood. Uh, yeah. the, but I liked. But Baller sort of started in that sort of like, oh, it's Entourage, but yeah. in the sports world, which is with a lot yeah. of fun. And with you and The Rock, I mean, come on, what a cast. I mean, come on, come on. Who can say no come to that? Come on, it's awesome. Uh, great, guys. July twenty uh, third uh, uh, on HBO Go, uh, HBO everywhere, and uh, Shimmer Lake on Netflix. Thank you, Rob. Thank Hal you. Rudnick, uh, Screen Junkie Show, and you're going to be on America's Got Talent. I am going to be on America's. Got talent, so uh, please uh, follow my character that I am playing. His name is Eric Jennifer. You can follow him at Eric Jennifer on Twitter or Instagram, yes. and uh, visit yes. uh, and visit my uh, website ericjennifer.com, and uh, you can learn more about the good boy of comedy, Eric Jennifer. Good Can't job. Can't wait. Can't wait. <laughs> Dan Merle. I love the JT you just tried to get away with saying "Screen Jim Keith's show" underneath. How I saw that E pop in there, JT. You caught it. Ah. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know. Of two weeks from today, yeah. well, as July we're 13th, this, July Thursday. 13th, I will be fighting Mike Carlson live right on here. One on one, on one, right? I damn well better be funnier than I was today. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, that was, so yeah, but I applaud you for yeah. going there. You got right to the end there. Uh, but man, good work. And uh, July 13th, Thursday, all of you YouTube watchers, come tune in to Screen Duggies YouTube, watch the live belt, belt battle. Lon Harris, thank you for fact checking today. Anything you'd like to plug? Uh, just follow me on Twitter at LONS. I'm not on America's Got Talent playing a character. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds so jealous. Not this Next season, season maybe. Next yeah. season. The Game Master can go on. Yeah, oh, there you go. Uh, yeah, awesome. Time. And uh, you can follow me everywhere at Andy Signor and all the social medias. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. And thank you to Rob. Uh, thank you so much for coming thank by. Thank you what a for pleasure. having me. This is a blast. Always fun when someone legit comes in here and, and does part <laughs> of <a> silly game. <laughs> cool. uh, very, very fun. Thanks. And thank you all at home for watching. We will see you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye bye. Bye bye.